Okay, welcome back. Hour number three. Very special hour coming up. We're going to uh, open some doors and let you look into areas that many of you just don't get the chance to unless you follow the site and see the weekly geoengineering updates that Dane Wigington makes available, and we post here, and they're they're posted around the world. Uh, this gentleman has long been one of my heroes. He has done more single-handedly, and, and I know what that's all about, to bring to light the reality of the simple fact that weather modification geoengineering is destroying the planet and virtually everything we know about it. We're used to things being stable. They're not stable anymore. Notice the fires. Uh, yes, I've said repeatedly that, in my view, at least half of the fires in Oregon where we have had no dry or wet lightning whatsoever are arson fires. I know the fire by my place, and you can see videos of that at the top of the home page. Arson fire. Uh, we're dry. We're beyond dry. We're in real trouble. And none of this is accidental. It is called geoengineering weather modification. Dane's work in bringing chemtrails to people who believe or don't believe is, is second to none. I don't know where we would be without Dane Wigington, honestly. I'm not blowing smoke his way. I'm just telling it like it is. He is the man. There are a number of uh, booklets, beautiful, full-color flyers about weather modification, chemtrails, that you'll be able to buy from uh, Dane and hand out. Uh, just They're not expensive at all. He may even be giving them away now. We'll find out. But I want you to know that uh, what we're going to discuss in this hour is crucial to the survival of you and this planet. If you look under Dane's name, the end times of geoengineering, you'll find a number of links. These are videos. He's produced uh, most of them. They're all in invaluable information. The first link is chemtrail images. We're going to go through those as well. But let me stop yammering and uh, say hello to my friend, Dane. Hello and welcome back again, neighbor. Na he's a neighbor. He's down the road a couple hours. That's it. Hi, Dane. Hello, Jeff. Thank you very much for... All your years of service to the greater good. I'm, I'm very wow. grateful for your voice with this issue, an issue that, quite simply, if we don't deal with it, all other points will soon become moot. All other points. That's no exaggeration, dear friends. All other points will become moot. We won't have uh, any, I won't say environment, I'll say planet. We won't have a planet to inhabit like we're used to. Uh, this is really... We're at the end times. This is not a joke. It's bad. Now, what happened up here was the same thing that happened down the road where Dane lives, near Reading. It was hotter than hell, and I mean hot. We had it here days and days and days and days and weeks, high 90s, over 100. Uh, it just didn't slow down. And all of a sudden, we have this this incredibly weird wind that came up to me out of nowhere. It came roaring over the hills and down into the valley here about 2 a.m. And I had a real bad feeling about that. And I was I was correct that that afternoon, fire. And it burned over a 1,000 homes and hundreds of businesses and God knows what else and, and during its rampage. And you can see, again, imagery of that up on the homepage. That wind, Dane, to me, uh, wasn't normal. It wasn't natural. Uh, it's another weird fluke, uh, engineered fluke, but a fluke in the weather pattern here. And it, it just, it just, I've never experienced it. But in the fall and the winter, we get big winds, but not in August when it's been blazing hot. It just doesn't happen like that. You're correct. And there's nothing natural about it. And we know through a number of processes, the climate engineers absolutely can manipulate wind patterns completely. When you affect convection, Jeff, as you know, you affect wind patterns, period. So another method that they can and are utilizing to affect wind patterns is through the use of ionosphere heaters. This is scientifically well-documented, not disputed, that when the ionosphere heaters, as you know, Jeff, 
with the electrical chain reaction that they cause in the ionosphere can create mm. a bulge in the atmosphere that pushes up and down. That downward pushing forces winds out below that yeah. on the surface. So, I mean, these winds are are absolutely – in how many cases now, Jeff, do these winds occur at exactly the wrong moment – <laughs> or perhaps the right moment for those in power to push yeah. these fires wherever they want to fuel them. Um, this is not coincidence. This is not nature. This is weather warfare. These fires, Dane, are being fueled by uh, 20, 30 years or more of chemtrail drops. Uh, aluminum is, uh, these aluminum particulates are all over the ground. They're in the plants. They're in the shrubs. They're in the trees. They, they're pulled up. They're tiny, tiny, tiny. They are accelerants. They burn very hot. Some of the firefighters, in fact, it was in one of your videos. I forget which one, but he kept saying, I, we've never seen anything like this. These fires are burning in all directions at the same time. We, they're extremely hot. We don't understand it. We, he was perplexed. He just didn't know. And yet, that's because he didn't have your knowledge or your booklets <laughs> and didn't understand. But these fires are so hot and so fast and so truly unpredictable. That's all I can tell you. That's what they're that's what they're doing. Whatever they want, it seems. And that wasn't just any firefighter. That was the head of Cal Fire. And ah. in fact, many of them do know. I knew some. I know some of the hierarchy in Cal Fire. Mm-hmm. They're for understandable reasons. They're uh, reluctant to acknowledge. You bet. These programs, but in regard to the ferocity of the wildfires, climate engineering, along with everything you've described, these particles are desiccants and they absorb and accrete all available atmospheric moisture, which then siphons it out of the foliage as well. So we have way record fuel, low fuel moistures. I mean, it's so far off the charts. The fuel moistures are unimaginably low. So we have a tender box that is simply waiting to go up in flames. Dead trees everywhere. So we know the soils from peer-reviewed science study. When they're saturated with bioavailable aluminum and the roots of the trees sense this, they shut down nutrient uptake. They begin Ah. to die a slow, protracted death from the roots up. That makes Uh them susceptible to the beetle infestations, which are the scapegoat for official agencies. They blame everything on the beetles. The beetles are only a symptom. And now, Jeff, as you know, in fact, you were the one – That first, when our website was taken down after we first published our data that UVC was hitting the surface of the planet, I believe Mm -hmm. it was in 2013 or 2014, you were the first one to help us get that word out. So thank you so much for that. And the UVC is frying the foliage from the top down. So from every conceivable direction, we have climate engineering in this equation, in addition to creating more dry lightning, and that is not the ignition source in every case, as you just mentioned. We have many sources of ignition, but it's nevertheless a source of ignition that is a factor in many places. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. again, the cutting off of precipitation, that is so key. We can see them on satellite imagery on the US, off the U.S. West, West Coast, completely disrupting, disbanding, and with radio frequency microwave transmissions, blocking any flow of moisture from coming into the state. Whatever the agendas, whatever the objectives, we can all debate and discuss that. But the fact that climate engineering is and has been cutting off the flow of moisture to the western U.S. consistently starting in 2007 Mm -hmm. is beyond debate, beyond debate. Yeah, I agree. And uh, from what we were talking about earlier, it doesn't appear that there's any substantial, if any, rainfall or moisture in the forecast for the next six to eight weeks which would put it after the election. No rains to speak of. Nothing scheduled. And it is the scheduled weather. And for those that don't know, Raytheon, private defense contractor Raytheon and Lockheed Martin, do all the weather modeling for the National Weather Service and NOAA, the Mm -hmm. two U.S. government agencies that we're told are the weather forecasting entities, both of which have an illegal federal gag order on them right now. (laughs) Uh, So we literally have the foxes running the hen house, and we have – so-called weather agencies that are simply reading scripts given to them by those that are actually manipulating the weather. How disgusting. It's, it's all disgusting. Let's uh, ask everyone to go to guests under Dane's name and 
Look up uh, chemtrail images. That's the first link there, right under the title of this, this segment. Chemtrail images. And you look at images, and you'll you'll see some very strange things. Can you see those, uh, Dane, right now? I did. I looked at all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And we, and we the first one. We keep a. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Well, we, I just you know appreciate you pulling those out because it gives people uh, um, some of the more shocking photos from around the globe on yeah. you know, what we see in our skies. It is absolutely not condensation. I know you know that. I know most of your listeners are very versed and know that as well. But for those that are not, again, we know that the all commercial carriers, all military tankers are fitted with a high bypass turbofan jet engine. It's a jet powered fan. 90% of the air that moves through that engine is non-combusted. It's nearly incapable of producing any condensation trail except for rare extreme circumstances and then only short lived. These are particulate dispersions. That's why they remain in the air. Not 90% of the air that moves through that turbofan engine is non-combusted. In other words, it's not broken down and there's no moisture being released. It's just going through. That's remarkable. And just again, look at some of the, look at these images. The first one looks like kind of gray spider webs. Uh, these are all from geoengineeringwatch.org. The second one is wild. Uh, that's the one with, we've got three, bands of moisture and the one that's up against california has a a a laughably absurd right angle base to it It, it's just ridiculous tell us about those When, when you see the right angles we see this also jeff in weather systems and we have captured some profound satellite images of right angles in low pressure systems mm-hmm. um i know you've seen this if you and i have exchanged some of these in- images going back oh, yeah. a long distance so in fact um many of those satellite captures were actually presented i personally presented them to governor newsom in his office in the capitol uh, governor newsom has had a very extensive data presentation on the climate engineering issue. He and his top aide by me at the Capitol, and Mm -hmm. he they could not deny the data or the validity of it. And what do we see him doing? Total omission of this issue because he knows how to protect his paycheck, his pension. In the state of California, more importantly, the 50-plus billion dollar budget deficit every year, nobody asks what happened to last year's deficit the year before and the year before? All roads lead back to those who print the money. I know you know that. They control militaries. They control countries. They control governments all the way down to the state and local level. And Governor Newsom is not about to risk that, even if he has to watch now, his whole state burn to the ground. Now, he, you're right. Exactly. Look at this picture, though. The three distinct moisture bands – and the one closest to California ran up against a wall. And then it's broken off at the bottom. It's a, a sheer 90 degree turn. You, that's just not, ladies and gentlemen, how, how the game's supposed to work. The next image, image number three, is fascinating. It shows, uh, it, it's an aircraft flight tracker image. It's a radar. And it was captured July 20th and July 21st, 2018 just days before the start of the catastrophic car fire on July 23rd. Look at the air tracker of two aircraft made those tracks. I forget that that was two aircraft or one. It was a single, uh, single plane, single, single aircraft. And we traced ownership back to JP Morgan. So, (laughs) you know, is that, should that be any surprise? Yeah. And uh, flying a pattern like that um, right over the areas that incinerated right in the days prior to the incineration, um, there are many, many agendas being carried out right now, and we will bear the brunt of complacency if if more more individuals, activists uh, don't rise to this challenge, if you will, to help us get the word out. And you and you mentioned Jeff the. the the booklets and, and some of these images are in those booklets along with patents and uh, NASA, uh, other NASA satellite images and so forth. We make those materials available for our approximate cost of producing and shipping. And, and so it's, it's, uh, 
quite a value. We put 20 of those booklets and a commercial DVD and, and uh, some other materials in a USPS mm-hmm. priority package for a little uh, 20 something dollars. And it's, again, it's just covering our hard costs and to have those, um, you've, I'm sure passed on some and to have a, that type oh, of yeah. visual is an exponentially better key to the door because this issue, as you know, Jeff, um, to, to introduce it verbally without anything to back it up that can, uh, Touch the the inner uh, more uh, receptive reception of their psychology, if you will. It's difficult when you, when you have a picture. picture like yours, and you say, "Hey, look at this. What does this tell you? What do you see here in this picture?" It makes them think. You don't have to lecture them. You don't have to do anything. Yes. You show them the Correct. show them the pictures and ask them what they see. That's how you do Correct. it. Of course, if, if you hear the door shut, just to go on and next, to, to only help those who want to be helped. But that, exactly. look at that flight, look at that flight layout. That's, that's tracked. That's a flight tracker. But why would a plane do that? Right over Reading, up and down, up and down, up. It's spraying. Spraying. Right prior to the fires. Interestingly enough, we had a, a, our large annual event scheduled for that week that was Immediately I remember. canceled. As, I remember. As, as soon as the fire started, it canceled. And, yeah. uh, at the fairgrounds, because we, of course, uh, gave up our, our reservation to the fire uh, fighting entities. And then we rescheduled right. at the, um, Holiday Inn. And within four days, they took that from us as well. And they didn't even use that facility. They, uh, mm-hmm. They canceled uh, our event, but they never used it. So we we found right. that of interest as well. But on that on the car fire, we know I know individuals again high up in Cal Fire. They were told to stand down when that fire started. They were not allowed to engage when they should have been able to until it got going. And that has been in the past business as usual. The new head of Cal Fire for Shasta County is uh, an exceptional individual that I, I know personally. And interestingly enough, anything that starts in this county, what we've seen since mm-hmm. is um, a no-nonsense, all-out effort to put it out. And we did not see that, unfortunately, in the past. No hold back. They jumped. They moved. Not now. Wow. Yeah. Now, now yeah. And I don't know how long that can last. I mean, you know, there's right. – uh, individuals above him as well, but I, I certainly salute what he's tried to do so far. But the totality of what's happening on our planet right now, Jeff, and I know you know this, the immediacy of what's unfolding, it is as nonlinear as it can possibly be. We face mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. immediate existential threats. We have right now in the Amazon, in 2020, we've had over 63,000 fires in the Amazon, 63,000. So California, the whole western U.S. has lost – now, I believe it's just over 6 million acres. Siberia's lost about 50 million so far this year. We don't hear anything about that. Mm-mm. The planet is losing its life support systems by the day, as you know. And, again, the equation is as nonlinear as it can be. So while everybody's distracted with political theater and idiocy, the planet's going down. Uh, no exaggeration whatsoever, what you just heard. None. Uh, let's go on to the next uh, next few pictures. They're pictures of... Uh, of spraying operations in the atmosphere, aerosolized spraying operations. And just if you have any doubt, go back and look at the picture from the flight tracker showing the aircraft up and down, up and down. Precision. This is aircraft traffic. One plane on radar, completely memorialized by that, those two, uh, those two images. Uh, the next one shows it, a rather tragically typical um, hash mark, sky, crisscross, uh, the next one as well. Just take a look at those. Understand those are not contrails. And it's so frustrating when you, you meet an otherwise intelligent person and they try to tell you they're just contrails. They don't want to listen. You cannot speak to them. They will not look at the brochures. They won't look at the booklets. They won't look at videos. They don't want to know. Their mind is made up. Don't bother me with the facts. And I think it's partly driven by fear. And sometimes arrogance and ego. But the, the fact of the matter is, what those pictures show should curl the hair on anybody's head. 
That is, that is death being sprayed from the skies. I don't know how else to phrase it. It's not instant death, but it, you talk about cumulative. It's right there. It is. And, and these materials, which we know are in the air column, not only from precipitation testing, which we've done hundreds of those tests around the globe, but we recently completed, as you know, atmospheric aerosol testing. We were actually able to acquire a NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, flying lab at, at uh-huh. considerable expense and, and difficulty. That was pretty neat that you did that. Wow. Well, it's it, 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 thank you. And it corroborated certainly what we already knew, that the heavy aircraft are dispersing these materials, which we are all inhaling with every breath we take. Inhaled heavy metals like aluminum are far more detrimental to our systems than ingested because inhaled, they go through the olfactory nerve straight into our bloodstream where they lodge on cell receptors like a plaque. It's bioavailable, bioaccumulative. It's building up in all of us. So, again, in addition mm-hmm. to the environmental implosion being fueled by these processes and programs, each of us individually, our health is being permanently compromised with each passing day. And all of that plugs into whatever pathogen the power structure chooses to release and fuel. And, in fact, even the dispersion of those pathogens, Jeff, uh, you, you know that mm-hmm. there's science study that proved COVID the COVID pathogen was found attached to airborne particles. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we know with the very uniform dispersion of the CV-19 pathogen, 25 countries in one wave, 85 in another, how does that uniform of dis- dispersion happen without some sort of uh, airborne mechanism? So I, all these dots certainly, based on data, seem to connect. I completely agree with that. Uh, there is a uh, – let's see – Another, oh, this is a good one. You can see it's called the dimming. Uh, it's a film trailer. Uh, Dane made it and, uh, it's got a lot. Catherine Fitz is in it. Uh, she makes some wonderful contributions. And after the break, we'll come back and, and play that trailer as well. Uh, these fires and the aluminum in them, just a couple of the ingredients, aluminum, barium. What do we know about? What did you learn when you, you got that plane and went up and took samples? What kinds of things did you find beside aluminum and barium? Anything of substance? We are still analyzing and getting access to the caliber of lab we need to do the full analysis uh, is is proven very difficult. We think some roadblocks are being put up in front of us. Oh, you bet. But in addition to... In addition to the heavy metals, we also have polymer fibers that are part of the ice nucleation process. Chemical nucleation, Mm -hmm. Jeff, like what you just saw happen in Denver a week ago from 100 degrees Mm -hmm. to snow in one day. Chemical ice nucleation for weather modification. And for your listeners, too, to make clear, uh, geoengineeringwatch.org fully recognizes and acknowledges anthropogenic warming, the factors that affect it to the planet. We've been very poor stewards of our planet. But the point is this. How can there be any legitimate discussion about the climate or the state of the climate from any perspective, any perspective whatsoever, without first and foremost acknowledging and including the climate engineering elephant in the equation, must be acknowledged to have any legitimate conversation about the issue. Totally, totally. Hold on just a minute, Dane, and I'll be right back. I'm going to play this uh, short trailer, and we'll continue our conversation. So all of you out there, look up. That's where I'll hell of a lot of it's happening we'll be right back okay welcome back uh let's get right to it this is called the dimming it's a film preview or a trailer however you wish uh geoengineeringwatch.org uh dane wigington produced it and narrates it and uh as good as the narration is you have got to take a look at the images oh my are they damning You've got some great, great clips in here, Dane. I, I don't, I don't know who's sending them to you, where you're getting them, but they are, they are stunning. How long did it take to assemble this, this much data? That's just the tip of the iceberg for what we have. And mm-hmm. if we can get the film finished, we've had extraordinarily uh, difficult challenges with that. And, um, we're, we're trying to overcome that. We actually had one editor that turned up dead five hours after I spoke to him. And again, maybe just an amazing coincidence, but um, there are no amazing coincidences. I'm sorry to hear this happened five hours after I spoke to him and about six hours before FedEx delivery of our hard drive, which we never recovered. So, you know, again, you sent him, uh, you sent him the hard drive. He's dead and you never got it back. 
We didn't get it back. Wow. And um, wow. the, the death certificate had no cause of death. And again, perhaps it's just a coincidence. I'm not making any claims. I'm just saying it's a pretty astounding timing. But we have now another individual working on that film and we, we hope to be, we hope to have in the next 60 days, Jeff, this done. We're running out of time. I mean, I, I can't stress enough that, uh, we are very close to very big links in the chain of our common reality breaking and that will be the end of the road for what we have known. And it's true. Trying- it's true. There's no going back. Once this thing breaks down and it's, I honestly, I, I'm not Dane Wigington, but I, I don't see any way to stop it. It looks to me like the planet is going to break. There's no the question the reality we've known. The, the, it, all it, of yes, it. It's done. It's gone. It's not coming back in any time frame that matters. The, the question now is can we salvage some part of Earth's life support systems? If the climate engineering, a.k.a. weather warfare insanity, is allowed to continue, mathematically speaking, statistically speaking, the answer would be no. But if we can expose and halt what's happening in our skies, allow the planet to respond on its own to the damage done. Uh-huh. Life is tenacious, Jeff, as you know, and if it's mm-hmm. given half a chance, mm-hmm. it finds a way. We have to give it that chance, and that's going to take all of us. We have to give it a chance to correct the grievous intentional damage we've inflicted upon it. Here's uh, here's the, uh, the little four-minute trailer. to Take a listen. And oh my, are the, are the images amazing, as you will see if you go look at it yourself. Official sources continue to claim that the jet aircraft trails, which linger, spread, and fill our skies with sun-blocking haze, are just condensation. But that narrative is a lie. Atmospheric particulate testing has now conclusively proven that the jet aircraft dispersed trails and haze in our once deep blue skies is not condensation as we have been told. They are absolutely not contrails. Contrails do not linger. This is uh, Charles Jones, U.S. Air Force Brigadier General, retired, former tactical weather reconnaissance pilot dissipate and go into cloud coverage period in the report i kept saying to people you Catherine know what is this Fitz. because now the sky is no longer blue it's starting to turn gray and what i found was a lot of people were pretending it wasn't happening it was kind of like it was not socially acceptable to do, you know we're all going to pretend this is not really happening and i thought oh this is very bad Prior history has proven that we have used weather. U.S. Air Force Major General retired, Richard Rolig. Back in the Vietnam conflict, suddenly you don't take a weapon off the table that was able to provide good data, provided a good reason for it to be used at that time. Should you expect that it is available on demand to have the ability to modify weather? Absolutely within this country and others. Because we're talking about a a very expensive global spraying program that involves all, if not almost all, sovereign nations. We have government documents, Senate documents, patents, military documents. We have film footage of them turning dispersions on and off with nozzles visible. We have lab tests from all over the globe verifying that the exact elements named in climate engineering patents are showing up. We have collected samples directly from the emissions from aircraft. This is a uh, geomicrobiologist. Uh, his identity is uh, being kept uh, private for the moment. We have identified particles in there and have shown nanoparticles of these um, metal oxides that are damaging to biological tissue and affect human health. Elements like aluminum, barium, strontium, polymer fibers, all of which are highly toxic, all of which are being absorbed by the entire web of life, including us. I know enough to know that we're talking about serious risk, and serious risk to your health. Everything I see in terms of the pattern says there's a war going on covertly. Climate engineering fallout is completely contaminating our waters, our soils, our crops, and every breath we take, thus impacting every aspect of our health. Geoengineering particles are nanoscale. So small, they go straight through our lung lining, into our bloodstream, 
and adhere to cell receptors like a plaque. Once absorbed, they are almost impossible to expel from our systems. The layer was um, filled with these nanomaterials, and that was our first evidence that this is, you know, that these nanomaterials are directly associated with the emissions from these planes. We're simply asking people to investigate the facts and to stop believing the official denial. This is a an intentional research area with unknown purposes. We need our military personnel, all branches of the service. We need all of their help. We need the answers to get to the bottom of this national security problem. Okay, there's a uh, credit roll now to some of the people involved in it. Uh, you'll get this finished. I'm really sorry to hear about the loss of uh, of your editor. I just, nothing surprises me anymore. If anybody gets in the way, they're just removed. The value of human life to these international elite is less than zero. It doesn't matter to them. They don't care about us at all. He was an exceptional editor, and he was extremely enthusiastic about this project. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were g- grieved to, to lose him, but we have uh, more competent help now, and uh, we will try to get this pass thrown before the bell rings, Jeff. You you know what I mean. Even if it's not the perfect pass, we, you don't have as, as much time as we would like to have. But we sure. are more concerned about launching this film. Once available, it will be available for free to anyone, everyone online. Our only goal is to expose this issue and if we can expose it we have a chance of stopping it while there's still something left to salvage of our planet's life support systems that's not an overstatement uh friends while there's still something left to salvage we've done grievous damage to this planet so badly that uh most people frankly don't have it in their their capability and understand it The other items that uh, you can take a look at under the trailer for the dimming, wildfires serve geoengineering agenda, uh, Dane Wigington video, geoengineering creating freeze-dry extremes, Uh, Dane again, and uh, it's all there. I don't know how, Lindsay Williams' new DVD is accidentally in here. Well, that's it's a good DVD. Take a look at that, too. But anyhow, uh, there we go. Now, This issue of spraying, when you run into people who just begin to laugh at you and treat you like you're you're an idiot, what is your counsel to them? These may be people you care about. What do you do? What do you say? What is your your M.O.? How do you pronounce uh, someone beyond salvation and, and just you write them off? I guess that's what you have to do. More than I could count. And at that point. The the burden is on them once the message has been delivered. Again, as the parable goes, Jeff, I know you know this, you can't wake somebody who's pretending to be asleep, uh-huh. uh, shake the dust off your sandals, as you stated, and, and move on. In regard to the, the wildfires, and this is an aspect of the video you mentioned, um, the 22-minute report, which I think you saw today, uh, that how geoengineers yeah. are utilizing the smoke. To put this in as simple terms as possible, most know that volcanic eruptions cause temporary cooling on the planet. All available data indicates that the climate engineers are at this point because the cryosphere, the polar ice, is absolutely imploding. There will be more and more headlines in the coming days, weeks, months about that. It appears that they are so desperate to stay off that process for even slightly longer that they are literally using and utilizing the incineration of forests to create a very temporary volcanic winter type scenario because these particulates do cool. In fact, the forecasts that were for us over Northern California before all these, the Mm long-term forecasts before all the fires really manifested were about 15 degrees higher than it is now. And these particulates because this, these fires are burning so extraordinarily hot, record hot, it is uh-huh. pushing those smoke plumes to record altitudes. That keeps the particulates aloft longer. And in the 22-minute report that you saw, I cite science study that, if you can imagine or your listeners can imagine, states the benefit of 
consistent burning of northern latitude forests to provide, quote, a modulating effect for Arctic temperatures. How insane can that possibly be? Uh, to, to I, literally, I, I, uh, that's mind boggling just to hear it crazy. Totally. It is. So the, it's important for you listeners, again, to separate as you and I discussed, you know, offline, but the source of ignition for these fires is one subject, but the conditions that have been established to allow these fires to burn with such ferocity mm-hmm. is directly rooted and connected to climate engineering. You know, you said something earlier that, uh, and people wouldn't believe this. They have an image of uh, firefighters going off to fight these these wildfires as being just absolutely full speed ahead. It it unfortunately isn't true. There is a lot going on that is uh, done just to uh, allow these men and women to make extra money. Uh, land and, and structures are allowed to burn to make extra money for them. Uh, sorry to say it, but I've heard it from a, a professional firefighter myself who works on these fires all the time. Uh, you've seen enough to probably make you sick, uh, this kind of thing. They just don't commit. They stand around, they talk, they eat pizza, they drink their Cokes, they get paid, and they just don't want to be bothered. It's, it's bizarre, but that's how some of the administration of these firefighting efforts is conducted. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb because you brought this up, but in the fires of 2008, and you remember that firestorm in California, um, yeah. that was also yeah. a result of climate engineering operations that uh, yeah. provided the dry lightning to to ignite all of those. I was on a fire line on a D6 cat, 60,000-pound D6 RXL, uh, doing everything I could to keep that fire from crossing the ridge next to Lake Shasta, and my that cat has a full cab, but it's not a fire cat. Um, I didn't have access to one of those. It's a huge machine, but it's not doesn't have screens and sweeps, the protection that a fire cat normally has. But I was the only dozer engaging that ridge on the east side of Lake Shasta, and there were four fire trucks there with hoses, and those fire personnel, and I – they would not put a drop of water on me. And I was um, neck deep in flames. And to show the contrast of others within these agencies who are extraordinarily honorable, there's quite a contrast in these agencies. Someone, mm-hmm. and I, I know who this someone is, and I, I, I owe him my life, I believe, but another individual with Cal Fire with enough pull, when there was no resources available, managed to somehow – at the at the last possible moment, I got hit a direct hit with a full load of fire retardant, and everything went dark. It it, it sounded like a tidal wave hitting my cat. I didn't know what happened. Um, I mean, for that moment, you literally don't know what just happened. And um, so, to express the contrast within some of these agencies, although there are those that are exactly what you described. There are some with incredible honor, and I, I don't know what this person did to to get that done, because he he although he was a, at a distant co- command location, he knew it was me and that cat that was uh, being described on I'm sure by radio communications of what I was doing, and you know I was, if I didn't cut it Jeez, off, where guy, it was cut off, it would, what's that? You're up there all alone. You're surrounded by fire. Somebody called it an oh. airstrike. And they put the whole load on you and your tractor and saved, literally saved your life in full view of these four fire crews. That's despicable. They had live hoses that wouldn't put a drop on me. Correct. So, oh, yeah, man. I know, I know firsthand what happens here. And I, and, and to that individual and the others like him and, you know, in these organizations that I know fight a lot of bureaucracy and, right. and uh, resistance for, for what they did. And I, um, and they, they later at that same event, uh, I was commandeered with my cat to pioneer the fuel break down to Lake Shasta with six uh-huh. of their dozers following because I know the terrain. I know the lay of the land here better than anybody. And, and, uh, you know, my, my gratitude to them for allowing wow. me after yeah. that event I described to do that, to get that fire break done, which did cut the fire off from advancing any further to the south. So there are individuals within these organizations too that are, 
are exceptional, and I hope that they are given the chance to um, rise to leadership levels. I know some have. Uh, the individual mm-hmm. who was responsible for the Boyd bomb or drop on me uh, has, and uh, I hope that continues to happen. Well, thank you for sharing that story. That was uh, that's astonishing. The uh, the gentleman I know who's a professional like like you, although he has his own crew as well. Uh, has told me things of similar nature. It's all about money. It's all about who happens to be in charge of w- whichever sector we're talking about. Uh, th- there is a tremendous amount of profit made with fires, okay? And this ties in to the idea that many of these fires, for- forget the political aspect, forget Antifa, BLM. In the past, a lot of these fires, unfortunately, are started so people can make money. That's the truth. It is the truth. It is the truth. And they're, they're let burn. I, I just got a phone message from another operator that I know that um, was on the Bear Fire 2005, uh, started near Lake Shasta. Mm-hmm. He's, this this is a, as good an operator as there is on the planet. It was only five acres. He wanted to engage. I was told by Forest Service, no, you're not on my uh, not on our list. Um, stand down and the fire blew up 10,000 acres of forest because they wouldn't let him go across the street and put it out. So, yeah, that's what we have. Another circumstance further north of us, similar scenario that I just huh. described, that fire turned into 70,000 acres. So um, it's sad but true. And when the forest die, Jeff, I know you yeah. know this. I know your yeah. listeners know it. When yeah. the forest die, we will die. It's that simple. And it's happening. And I, I just, uh, if you look at, at the video I put up at the top of the home page at Rents, the first opening 30 seconds shows a, a DC-10 jumbo jet tanker, 250 feet maybe above the ground, going in and trying to save homes. Tremendous drop. And I don't know who was doing the filming of it, but it was a, a remarkable. So I started the uh, the video with that. I did some editing on it. And I want you to look at that and understand that this fire, as are so many of them, was completely out of control. The resources were not available to even confront it in many cases. It spread too quickly. Uh, I also have a video, a helicopter flyover, showing you uh, some of the thousand homes that, that, it, he flew the whole length of the fire path, and you can see it burning at night. You, when you see this at night, you'll understand a lot more than you will by looking at daytime footage. This is burning right through a town, a city, the city of Phoenix, the city of talent, and it came out of the city of Ashland, where I live. Um, it's it's just a real important visual to to assimilate and to pull in and consider. The idea that uh, these fires are money makers. Not new, it's old news, but when you think about what Dane just said, five acres up to, going up to, blew up to 10,000, um, should, it, it should make you angry. And I wonder if that's somehow endemic to the, uh, to the state government of California. Now I'm sure it happens all over the country, but California is, is particularly suspect to me. How do you think that works? Am I making any sense? Is California worse than some because of their bureaucracy and their politics? It's, it's, I think I've you just hit this. the nail. Huh? Go ahead. The last two statements you just made, the bureaucracy, the politics, you, you hit the nail on the head. The larger the entity is, the mm-hmm. more susceptible it is to what we have discussed. Mm-hmm. And even good men in the field, if they're told to stand down, um, that's what they do. And I hope that they refuse to follow that type of order anymore. Again, we are so close to hitting the wall at full velocity. Insect populations down 80 to 90%. GeoengineWatch.org was the first major source. I believe nearly, it was nearly 10 years ago we published that data. We had academia try to marginalize us for that. Now they've admitted to it. Uh, if the insects don't survive, we won't survive. The ozone layer is collapsing statistically, mathematically at the current rate of destruction. We may face total ozone layer collapse by 2026, another game over scenario. Fukushima, Jeff, a subject I know you're very familiar with, 
if we have a damaged atmosphere, and we do now, and it's getting worse by the day, and we have a large CME, coronal mass ejection, a Carrington event, and it shuts down nuke plants all over the globe, and they can't cool themselves. Now we have Fukushima uh-huh. times 100 or 200. Uh-huh. We are truly in a dark place. But of all the challenges we face, we have to focus on priorities. What's what's the biggest hole in the bottom of the boat? And that is climate engineering, a.k.a. weather warfare, a.k.a. biological warfare right now. We must expose and halt that. If we can do that, which is the single greatest leap we could take in the right direction, mm-hmm. it would drag so much to the surface with it. It would make clear the severity of our situation. It would allow the planet to respond on its own to the damage done. It would at least buy us time. The biggest hole in the bottom of the boat. That's an interesting expression and, and very, very accurate. Sure, let me, let me, yeah, let me qualify ahead. that. Short of nuclear annihilation. Short of Fair nuclear enough. annihilation. Fair enough. You mentioned the insects uh, going. Uh, we know Fukushima has caused a lot of that in the northern areas, British Columbia yes. and so forth. They have what they call the quiet forest syndrome. You've got it down here, too. You go out at yes. night, there's no more crickets, no more insects, no more chirping, no more bugs. I have it here. I go out at night. I don't hear anything. Nothing. And when I first moved here 20 years ago, it was a symphony of sound at night from insects and animals. Just remarkable. All gone now. All gone. Dane, thank you for everything you do. Keep it up. Uh, I'm here to help anytime, anyway. You know that. Thank you, Jeff. Stay safe. Okay. All right. Thank you for all you've done for the greater good. Take care. You bet. Dane Wigington, geoengineeringwatch.org. Please take a good look at that. All right? And, And look under there in guests. For that, uh, that trailer, very important. And we'll be back with you tomorrow night.